So I actually wanted to start off this video with a very simple question to everybody who's watching. When somebody asks for a recommendation for an air cooler, where does your mind go right away? And I know the vast majority of people are just gonna simply default to saying thermal rate. And with good reason, right? From a price to performance perspective, they're almost unbeatable right now. But thermal right coolers can be hard or even impossible to find in some regions. In others, even here in Canada, their pricing can be all over the place, from super affordable one day to a terrible value the next. Meanwhile, some companies have been working their butts off to offer high performance, budget focused coolers to fill in those availability gaps and offer some very solid alternatives. And one of those companies is, well, ID Cooling. And if you've watched any cooler videos here on Hardware Canucks, you're gonna know that their products offer also, just like Thermal Rate, an amazing blend of price and performance and also availability. Now, what they're doing is they're launching a brand new cooler. Well, a brand new cooler I'm saying here, but this is the Frozen A620 Pro SE. Yes, it's a pretty big mouthful, but what they're offering here is going to be interesting for a lot of people. They are promising performance that can match or beat the now legendary Peerless Assassin 120, while also retailing right now, its baseline price is $30 US and in Canada at least, it's 45 bucks. Anyways, like I said, this isn't the first time that we've been exposed to ID cooling. We've actually covered a bunch of their products, including the original Frozen A620. The cooler this one is sort of loosely based on almost two years ago. And along with the A720, they're some of the best air coolers we've ever tested to this day. And speaking of the original A620 in relation to where the Pro SE fits in, well, it's a bit complicated since the Frozen A620 is now sort of like the middle child. At the top of the lineup is the new GDL version that uses high performance 27 millimeter thick fans and a pretty unique black and gold color scheme. Meanwhile, the Pro SE in both its standard and RGB forms hit a much lower price point. Now you might think that the A620 Pro SE is just a simplified version of the original A620 without its powder coated finish, but there's a lot of other changes going on under the hood. Honestly though, when it's installed into a system, you won't really see any difference between these two coolers since the sides will be hidden by the GPU and case while both heatsinks have black plastic top plates to clean up their looks. First of all, the Pro SE might have an identical length and width as the A620, but it also adds three additional cooling fins, making it a few millimeters taller. Those fins though, well, they're a direct copy paste with an identical profile. The bases, well, they're essentially the same too, with both using a copper core with aluminum spreaders. The positioning of the six six millimeter heat pipes has gone through a slight reimagining too. Instead of being staggered, they're now parallel to one another. According to ID Cooling, this was done to optimize cost, but it also might have a small positive impact on cooling. ID Cooling has also thoroughly revised and simplified their mounting kit versus previous generations. Instead of a kit of plastic spacers and small screws, this one simply has mounting arms for Intel and AMD, along with an Intel backplate. That goes along with common standoffs and locking bolts that are used for both platforms. And as a sort of small side note here, ID Cooling has told us this new mounting kit addresses some of the concerns we've had in the past with inadequate pressure on some sockets, specifically on Intel. This is not just another mid-tower case with fans. It's a Fantex. The all new G400A comes with a front inlet design to reduce turbulence and welcome all the airflow with the 140mm fans, the daisy chain and the infinity mirror is a nice touch. It pairs perfectly with the new 360 M25 AIOs, both in performance and visual consistency inside the case that is well equipped for any hardware in 2025 and beyond. Check them out below. And I know what a lot of AMD users are going to be asking right now. What about an offset mount? And unfortunately, according to ID Cooling, they haven't really seen much in the way of cooler temperatures when using an offset kit on this cooler specifically. That's because some of those optimizations that they've gone through for the overall mounting pressure will also carry over into AM5 CPUs too. But by far, the biggest change here has to be the fans. While both coolers top out at 2000 RPM, the way they get there is very different from one another. While the standard Frozen A620 uses a seven blade, 120 millimeter fan design with a fluid dynamic bearing, the Pro SE uses a much more swept wing, five blade design with hydrodynamic sleeve bearings. And on paper at least, what we're looking at is a significant downgrade when it comes to comparing the fans on the new Pro SE to the original A620. Everything from static pressure to the amount of air that they move, well, the Pro SE is going to be facing an uphill battle. At least that's what 
it seems like. But our testing, it actually tells a different story. So what I wanted to do here is I wanted to compare both of these two coolers on a RPM normalized perspective. And also listen to what the Pro SE sounds like. So what this shows is while the original and Pro SE are relatively close in the fan speed versus noise output department at lower RPM levels, at 1500 RPM, the Black Edition's fans start to get a whole lot louder. Meanwhile, the SE sort of levels off until 1700 RPM. And after that, it also takes a jump upwards, but it never gets as noisy as the original. So while the A620 Black might have a distinct edge in raw performance at full speed, because of this noise profile, it will actually have a tough time in decibel normalized testing, like the tests that we do. And look, as usual, those last clips that you saw were edited together for time's sake. And what you didn't hear is what happens with these fans in between each of the RPM levels. And that's where we noticed a little bit of an interesting fan profile when it came to the A620 Pro SE. Let's have a quick listen to that. So let me explain to you very quickly what we're hearing here, and that is a pretty distinct bearing whine when shifting upwards or downwards within the RPM spectrum. And look, this isn't going to affect everybody. It's only going to affect those folks who sort of do the wrong thing and let their motherboard take over their fan speed profiles. We never ever recommend that. Those default motherboard auto fan settings, you should never touch those. It's also going to affect the folks who have very aggressive manual fan curves. But in our perspective, what you should be doing is exactly the way that we test. And that is you find that happy medium between noise and temperatures for your usage needs and your system, and you set your fans at that. And then you just don't touch them. So in our testing, at least, it's not going to affect anything. But speaking of testing, I really wanted to get into that and talk about the AMD gaming results. And yeah, I need to address this right away. We're still using the 7700X here, but in the background, there's a ton of work being done to retest coolers on the 9800X 3D. It just takes a lot of time. Anyways, this is one area where ID cooling has historically struggled a bit, mostly due to their lack of offset mounting. But the A620 Pro SE almost matches the Peerless Assassin 120, Phantom Spirit, and PA140, while also coming within about one and a half degrees of much, much larger and more expensive coolers like the A720. It also provides a significantly better noise normalized performance than the standard A620 Black, which sort of places that heatsink in an odd situation since it does tend to cost quite a bit more. Moving on to 7600X, and there really isn't much to see here. Since this chip doesn't put out enough heat to seriously stress any of these coolers, we're seeing a delta of about four degrees between the A620 Pro SE and something like the Liquid Freezer 3, which is one of the best 240 millimeter AIOs available for AMD CPUs. Right in logjam beside literally every other cooler except the 2D15s and Frost Spirit V3. And yet as decibels increase, it actually starts to be one of the best in noise normalized situations like this by pulling ahead of the A620 Black and A720, along with narrowly beating the two Peerless Assassins and even the Phantom Spirits. Meanwhile, under full load, the 7700X proves to be quite a bit harder to keep under 90 degrees for air coolers. And while the A620 Pro SE does provide slightly better performance than the non-SE model, it's only by a single degree at the very most. But let's pause and look at the full picture here. 
there's less than two degrees separating 10 of the 13 coolers here. That means most of them provide literally the exact same amount of cooling capacity for single CCD AMD CPUs. Dual CCD models on the other hand, well, those things are a whole different ball game and we're seeing that here with the 7950X. In general, to get those under control, at least at lower fan speeds, you'll absolutely need a liquid cooler or something like the D15G2. The A620 Pro SE though, well, it does respect against the competition by beating the Dark Rock Elite, Corsair A115, and the regular A620, while also providing almost the same numbers as the A720, PA140, and PA120. So for the price at least, and the fact that it uses a compact dual 120 millimeter fan layout instead of some of the big boys here that use dual 140s, well, that makes the A620 Pro SE a good little cooler. Now moving on to Intel testing, and it suddenly looks like ID Cooling's claim of better mounting pressure, well, it's starting to pay dividends. While the regular A620 and even the bigger A720's cooling numbers sort of flatline at a certain point, the Pro SE sees a continual temperature drop throughout its entire RPM range. That means it also convincingly beats the Peerless Assassin while offering numbers that are similar to the Phantom Spirit 120 EVO and even the original Noctua D15. And that trend continues with a lower thermal load on Intel systems, sort of something equivalent to a 13600K, 14600K, or 265K. At lower noise levels, the A620 Pro SE is competitive, but it really picks up steam around the 37 decibel mark, and it starts going toe-to-toe -to -toe against some of the best coolers around, like the D15s, Peerless Assassin 140, A720, and Frost Spirit 140 V3. It also easily remains ahead of the Peerless Assassin 120 and Dark Rock Elite. Moving on to a significantly higher thermal load shows even better results for this thing. And that certainly does point towards the possibility heat from the CPU is getting through the base and into the heatsink proper in a much more efficient way than many other coolers. So the end result is a relatively compact dual 120 millimeter design, nearly matching the numbers put down by Noctua's new giant D15 G2. And if that isn't impressive, I don't know what is. No limits on the Intel platform though, well, that leads to a complete logjam with every cooler we have here just getting demolished in the temperature testing. Yes, even the 240 millimeter AIO. But switching over to clock speeds tells a completely different story. One that echoes what we saw at 253 watts, with the A620 Pro SE getting ridiculously good numbers right across the board. The only air cooler that it doesn't beat is the D15 G2. Yet you have to ask yourself, would you ever want to cool a fire-breathing Intel chip under an all-core workload with an air cooler to begin with? Probably not, but at least this heatsink can handle it a lot better than competitors like the Peerless Assassin series, Phantom Spirits, and even 140 millimeter based options like the A720, A15, and Dark Rock Elite. So what we have here with the frozen A620 Pro SE is exactly what so many people have been waiting for, including myself. It is a viable alternative to the Peerless Assassin 120 that costs about the same amount of money. And actually, if you do a poll across the globe right now, on average, in a bunch of regions, the Pro SC is actually going for less money than most thermal right products, including this one right here. Now, from a performance perspective, what we're looking at is very similar performance to the Peerless Assassin on AM5 systems. But somehow, ID Cooling has optimized this thing so well for the Intel side of the equation. It just runs away with the entire game. And for all of those reasons together, I'm giving the Frozen A620 Pro SE our damn good value award. This thing is just it's so good right across the board. And yet I have to wonder if ID Cooling isn't maybe kicking themselves a bit over not focusing a bit more on those AMD optimizations I was talking about. I mean, the IHS on current generation Ryzen CPUs does provide a pretty big thermal bottleneck and it was impossible to predict AM5 based CPUs would absolutely dominate the sales charts like they're doing now. But it would certainly be nice to have the Pro SE's pretty dominant position on Intel also carry over to AMD users. But even without that, I think we all have to appreciate what's been done here from a value added perspective. I, I'm gonna give ID Cooling, like I've done in the past, uh, a pat on the back because bravo, everything is getting more expensive. 
this thing shows that some amazing things can still be done at a very affordable price point. Now, before I leave off on this video, I just wanted to update you guys a little bit on what's going on behind the scenes when it comes to cooler testing, because you haven't really seen all that much of it, or at least not as much as I might have wanted. What we're doing is we are redoing a lot of our air cooling and our AIO testing methodologies here. So new tests, new processors, and making them, I guess, a lot more digestible when it comes to everything from charting to acoustics. So as the year progresses, you're gonna see a lot of interesting things being rolled out on that front from us. But until that point, I'm Mike with Harbor Canucks, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.